Hello, I'm the Great Orbax, and we're here today with Dr. Mike Massa, and we're going to discuss standing waves and resonance. Luckily for us, Dr. Massa has a collection of oversized springs at home, and he brought one in today. So we're going to put a wave into this spring. I'm going to generate a wave at this end, and as we'll notice, it actually has an amplitude, and it actually travels down to the other end. And we notice that it does two things. One, when it hits, it bounces back, and two, that the two waves interfere with each other, and they create a kind of pattern. Now, you can actually put a wave in of a specific length that actually has a pattern that generates what we call a standing wave. Constructive and destructive interference taking place. And it occurs when you put in the length of a half wavelength. Increasing it again, we can put in another half wavelength interval, creating one full wavelength or two halves. Now, this is a mechanical wave. It's a wave trapped inside of an actual object. But something else that behaves like a wave is something that we call sound waves. Sound. So sound is also a wave, right? Yeah. And so you can actually generate sound with a speaker system like we have over here. In the same way that we establish a standing wave on the spring, that mechanical wave, we can do the same thing with sound. Sure, if we just change the wavelength or the frequency, you'll hear it get louder just when we get to resonance. So you can hear as I change the wavelength up and down. And that's not increasing volume over there, that's just by changing the frequency. So yeah. the frequency comes up to some resonance level, it, it gets louder, and then as you go past it, it actually gets quieter again because you've put them in in non-half wavelength intervals. Now that's the sound waves inside of here, and you can hear it, but you can't actually see it. And it's the same thing as the mechanical wave that we just saw. Mm. But let's, let's take a look at it. What does it look like? So, what we've done here is we've taken this tube, and we've filled it full of methane gas. Now, we've got small holes drilled out of the top, which gives us a resolution of effectively three quarters of an inch. And if there's gas coming out of the sides, then you could light it on fire. This flame indicates that there's actual gas inside of this tube, right? And right now there's no sound. So this gas just coming out completely on its own. We've got an even level of distribution. I'd say the pressure is probably the same throughout this entire tube. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna send a standing wave through here and that's gonna alter the pressure at different points. We're gonna get resonance and so there are gonna be parts where the pressure causes a large flame to come out and other regions where the pressure inhibits the flame. Here, I'm just gonna turn the sound up a little bit. And you can see right in the middle, we have a low amplitude of the flame. And it's in half wavelength intervals, right? We have a half wavelength here and a half wavelength here. And so you've got a whole wave that's in here. Constructive and destructive interference taking place just from the sound that's being pumped into this tube full of gas. But if I tune this up a little bit further, you'll be able to hear me get resonance again when the volume goes up. There we go. I think that's very, very so this is three half wavelength intervals, right? Just the same way as we had in the spring, the mechanical wave, now we've recreated that with sound waves inside of a tube, just oscillating the pressure from high and low versions of pressure. This is a one dimensional representation, just exactly the same as that spring that we saw before, 1D, a straight line, comes here, bounces, pops right back, <laughs> comes right back at it. You can actually take this and adapt it to a 2D surface. Okay, let's check it out. All right, you know what will fix this? More fire. Segway through the flames and... Before, we were looking at a one-dimensional example where we watched a wave travel along a spring, we watched a wave travel through a tube, but we can actually also look at a more complex example in two dimensions. Here we've got a flame drum. Now instead of just a wave going from one end to the other, it's free to exist in this 2D environment. And so you get the same thing, right? Resonance, you can hear the resonance yeah. audibly. When you get a larger volume like this, you're in a resonant system now. And you can see it now too. Again, visually, we've got a 2D resonance taking place. You've got big pressure, low pressure, high fire, low fire. Okay, let's, let's move it up to higher frequency and see what else happens. Oh, well, here we go. Okay. Let's keep bringing it up. So now are we going to see three lines coming up next? But here you go, it's another visual interpretation of what resonance is. It's a bit more complex than the simple 1D example we saw before. There's clearly more going on than just slapping in half wavelength intervals, but it's still resonance. You can hear it as the sound goes up and it increases in pitch. You can see it now as well. And so we have the definition of resonance here with our flame drum. Now remember, get back to work. <laughs>